What's up guys, Eric here from TechSode TV, and today I'm gonna to show you guys the fastest way to transfer all of your data from an iPhone, an older Samsung device, or any other Android device to the Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, or S20 Ultra. The first thing you need to do is insert your SIM card. The SIM ejector tool is on the opposite side of the cover. You pull this out, flip that over, and there is your SIM ejector tool. The SIM tray is located at the top of the device. This is the hole that you push the little pin into. Don't push it into this hole, that's a microphone. You'll break the microphone. So make sure it's the one that has the outline on it. When you pull the tray out, you also see that you can put your micro SD card in here as well. So if you have one, go ahead and put that in when you put your SIM card in. Once your SIM card is in, go ahead and start your phone. Once your phone starts up, go through the setup process until you get to the screen that I'm about to show you. And if you've already set up your Galaxy S20 Ultra, go to this time code in the video to see how to get back to the file transfer feature without factory resetting your device. So this is the screen you need to pay attention to. From here, tap next. So it says to connect your old device. I'm gonna demonstrate this part with the iPhone. And you can connect the iPhone in one of two ways. So the first way is to just use the cable that came with your iPhone. So a USB-C to lightning cable, that'll do the trick. Or you can use an adapter that may have come with your phone depending on where you purchased it from. The adapter looks like this, and this is a USB-C to regular USB adapter. And this will plug in to the bottom of your Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, or S20 Ultra. Since I have this iPhone cable available, I'm just gonna use this. Once the device is plugged in, tap next. Technically, you can transfer things wirelessly if you're coming from an Android device, but I highly recommend using a cable regardless of which device you're coming from because the cable transfers are so much faster than wireless transfers. So go ahead and tap cable, tap agree, tap OK, tap trust, enter your PIN, then tap next on your S20. You may get this pop-up. This is saying that your S20 Ultra needs to be charged to at least 80% before you can start the transfer. And unfortunately, you can't start charging this with a wireless charger and have it start working. You do actually have to charge all the way up to 80% before you can start the transfer. By the way, if you guys wanna learn more about the world's thinnest charger, go ahead and click the card above or the link in the description. If you don't wanna wait for your S20 Ultra to charge, you can just skip this step for now and then transfer all of the data later. Once your S20 Ultra is charged to at least 80% and you connect it back to your iPhone 11 Pro Max, you'll get to this screen here where you can actually select what you want to transfer. And if you look on the side, you'll see these little arrows here. And if you tap one of those, you get a few more options. So here I can choose to not transfer my block list or not transfer the contact stored on a device. If I tap the arrow on messages, I can choose to transfer all of the messages from my iPhone last two years, last 12 months, six months, three months, or just the last 30 days. I only want the last 30 days, so I'm gonna check that. If you tap the arrow on the apps option, it's gonna ask you to sign into your Google account. This allows Samsung to see which applications from your iPhone are also available on the Google Play Store. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign into my Google account now. Once you're signed in, it'll add a check mark next to apps list. Then once you start the transfer, it'll show you a list of all the applications it found on the Google Play Store that match applications that you had on your iPhone, and you can select which applications you'd like to install and which ones you don't want to install. Home screen will transfer the wallpaper from your iPhone to your Galaxy S20 Ultra. However, it can't transfer default wallpapers. So if it's a wallpaper that came with your iPhone 11 Pro Max that can't transfer, you can only transfer third-party wallpapers. And I think that's just because of copyright reasons. You can then select whether or not you wanna transfer your images, videos, audio files, and documents from the iPhone. I have over 100 gigs worth of images and videos, so I'm not gonna transfer any of that because it'll take a super long time. At the bottom, there's an option to see what you can't bring over from an iPhone. So if you tap that, you'll see that you can't bring over FaceTime and voice call history. And as I just mentioned, you can't bring over default wallpaper from your home screen. If you connected an Android device to your Galaxy S20 Plus, you'd get a few different options. So here I have a Google Pixel 4 XL connected to a Galaxy Z Flip. But first, I need to install the Samsung Smart Switch application from the Google Play Store before I can actually connect it to my Galaxy Z Flip. If it's not connecting, you may need to pull your notification shade down, tap this Android system, tap this here, and switch to file transfer. From there, you can then tap smart switch again on your Samsung device, tap receive data, 
And now it's going to be searching the Pixel 4 XL for data to bring over. And you can see that there's a few different options here than you get when you're connected to an iPhone. So if I tap the apps arrow, you can see that right off the bat, I can select which applications I do and don't want to transfer. As I said a minute ago, you can still do this with the iPhone. It's just not at this step. Something that you can do when connected to an Android device that you can't do when connected to an iPhone is select which specific images, videos, music, and documents you want to transfer. When you're connected to an iPhone, it's all or nothing. If you're transferring from another Samsung device, you get all the same options as you did when transferring from a Google device. And if you have a micro SD card installed on the old device and you scroll to the bottom, you can see that the SD card has its own storage section. And again, you have the same options to select specific videos and images. Once you've selected everything you want to transfer, scroll to the bottom and tap transfer. Then it's going to show you all the applications from your iPhone that are also available on the Google Play Store. And from here, you can select which applications you do or don't want to install. Once you're done selecting the applications, tap install. Now just finish the setup process and everything's going to start installing in the background. But whatever you do, don't remove this cable because the transfer will stop. Once you finish setting up your phone, you'll get to the home screen. From here, just swipe the notification shade down and you can tap this smart switch notification here and see how the progress is going with transferring all your data. Fortunately, from this point, you can now start using your Galaxy S20 Ultra, setting up the home screen however you want, installing any extra applications you want, and just playing with the device in general. Once the data finishes transferring, you'll get a notification here that says done copying. Tap here to see the results. If you tap that, you can see the results of what it copied. So if you tap copied items, it'll give you a breakdown of everything that it copied. There are five items for apps that it transferred. So there's the app list. If I tap this, it's actually going to show all of the applications that it transferred from the old device. You can see it also transferred some notes from the iPhone as well as a bunch of online bookmarks. And it even transferred my alarms. You also get the option to bring stuff from your iCloud account, but don't bother going through this process. This is just going to give you a few less options for transferring information, and it's all going to have to be done over network, so it's going to be super slow. Samsung Notes just takes you to the Samsung Notes application. It's basically just showing you that it's there. Get Android apps to match your iOS apps. Just shows all the apps you had on your iPhone, and if there's a match, you can go ahead and tap this download icon to download that application. But since I chose to install all the applications when I started the transfer in the first place, I don't have to worry about doing anything here. And home screen layout just changes how the home screen works. It functions more like an iPhone where all of your applications are on your home screen and there's no app drawer. So if you're coming from an iPhone, this is going to be the most familiar way for you to switch to a Samsung device. I personally prefer having a home and apps screen. So I'm going to switch back to that and tap apply. And splitting the home and app screen just means that you have your home screens that have only a few apps or the apps that you want shown on it. And then you have to just swipe up to see all the other apps you have installed. Once you're done going through all of this, just tap next. And this is telling you to turn off iMessage on your iPhone in order to keep getting text messages on your Galaxy S20 Ultra. And the reason for this is if you keep iMessage on, the messages are still going to go to the iPhone because the messages can transfer over Wi-Fi. And if that happens, you won't get those texts on your new device. Once you've turned off iMessage, tap next. And now your Galaxy S20 Ultra is all set to go. If you already set up your Galaxy S20 Ultra and you didn't get the chance to transfer all of your data from an old device to your S20 Ultra when you set it up the first time, that's okay. To get back into Smart Switch, all you have to do is swipe up to see all of your applications, then swipe over to the letter S, find Smart Switch, open that, tap Receive Data, Select the device that you want to get data from, tap cable, and then just disconnect and reconnect the cable. From that point, just follow the steps at this time code here. If you guys want to see a speed test between the 512 gigabyte version of the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the 512 gigabyte version of the Galaxy S20 Ultra, then make sure you've clicked that notification bell next to the subscribe button so you can be notified right when the video is uploaded. And while you're waiting for that, you can check out my top 20 unknown Galaxy Z Flip features. That's it for this tech episode. God bless, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.